No way, this has to be the coolest farm I've ever made. Look at that. In this episode, I'll be making the one farm that every Minecraft player absolutely needs. And you might not expect it, but it's actually the cobblestone farm. You can craft a ton of things out of cobblestone, so this farm is an absolute must for players looking to upgrade their gameplay loop. My name is Pineapple Man, but you can call me Penny. And thank you for joining me in episode 9 of my survival series. And so I welcome you back to the science plaza where we'll be building the cobblestone farm today. And I'm just down here getting some materials together. But I think you're really going to enjoy the design and I think it's pretty unique. Hopefully you all are doing well. You know, my favorite thing about the whole YouTube thing is getting to interact with the community. So if you find this video interesting, consider leaving a comment because I'd really appreciate it. So last episode, I actually showed off the map art at the beginning. So check out today's map art that was suggested by a viewer. Let me know what you want put on the canvas next. But the cobblestone farm required a lot more slime than I currently had. So I threw together a quick slime farm. Fans of the series might recognize this location. The same, I'm disappointed. It's an understatement. This is, um, well, this swamp may be small, but it's definitely big enough for a small slime farm. So I threw together a slime farm that utilizes the mechanic that Il Mango discussed, where slimes can actually spawn on brown mushrooms because of their light level of one. It's kinda cool. So I AFK'd for a little bit over an hour and had more than enough slime for today's project. That's right, it's science time. And it's also time to discuss the star of the episode the TNT duplicator for the cobblestone farm. Now, you could see why I need a cobblestone farm. So I figured I would feed two chimkins with one seed and blow up some stone with the TNT duplicator module. Okay, I got all the components together for a TNT duplicator module. And I don't understand this thing fully, but I'll try to explain it to the best of my ability here. So I decided to build it over here since this area is kind of a wasteland with our armor testing experiments that we did. Anyways, so you, you pretty much build this sort of slime, um, I don't know, formation. And you have to assemble these things with the button press. So, so I'll show that off in a minute here and kind of talk about what's going on. So we have this TNT block with a wall above it and then a dead coral next to it. So what's going on here is we're going to get the, the block above the TNT in a powered state without activating the TNT when we push this assemblage together. So um, th this this one's pretty common. And if you've ever seen a world eater, um, I think they typically use similar duplicators to this. I'm not 100% sure though. Like I said, I don't understand these things fully, but I do understand the basic concept. So, so um, let's see, I got the dead coral in, right? Yes, okay, cool. That, that part's pretty important. <laughs> and then, um, activator rail not there but there or detector rail bye bye with the minecart on it so so you're gonna see now that the detector rail is powered okay one click to assemble and now it should be ready to duplicate so this is kind of a cursed and illegal contraption right at this there. point because that block is receiving power so look in the f3 screen um that uh detector rail is is powered but it's not activating the tnt Okay, I got a little pit here for the TNT to fall in, and... Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, I just killed my boys. Okay, so that happened because this slime block back here is actually capable of launching the TNT. Well, as you're gonna see, I'm definitely aware of that, but I just didn't think about it in this scenario, so... I'm going to just go ahead and rebuild this and I'll make a quick cut. Okay, now that's that. I've actually done a blast already, so this should definitely work. There we go. Free cobblestone. No way. Yeah, so I'm just going to use this to gather up a bunch of cobblestone because I need pistons and observers for the cobblestone farm. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the time lapse of that and hopefully you enjoy. And so I started with the cobblestone generator and I wanted to get some waterlogged leaves in place, which is kind of a budget version of obsidian in this case, but also is going to match better for the decoration. 
I designed this tileable cobblestone generator that generates cobblestone instead of stone. I know stone has a lower blast resistance, but it's often a lot easier to generate cobblestone than it is stone. Once I got it in place, I just finished it off with its own hopper clock, and it was working just fine. And it was time to get started on the TNT duplicators. But I kinda wanted to do something unique with the TNT duplicators, so I opted to go for three lanes of soul sand water elevators that the TNT would be launched down until it reached the end where there was a slime block launcher. The TNT would then be launched right over a walkway, which made for a really cool but terrifying effect. Finally, I assembled the dupers and hooked them up to a hopper clock. Then it was time to test the farm. This lever will determine if I'm happy for the rest of today. Oh baby, that is awesome. I love it. And so with the functioning farm in place, I decided that it was time to decorate the thing. Since I really wanted to showcase the farm's interesting design, I decided to go with something that resembled a computer component. I shall call this the cobblestone processing unit, or the CPU. Enjoy the time lapse. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Um, I had a ton of fun making this thing. It's obviously not perfect, as with all the things I build, but it is kind of cool. So let me know what you guys thought about it, because because it would be cool to to hear from you guys about it. Um, though I really like how the walkway turned out here too. It makes for a kind of interesting and cool feature to have here in the science plaza. Just a a rather terrifying walkway. Yeah, let's get some OSHA approved signage in place. There we go. Now no lawsuits. Okay, so um, one of the things you may have noticed is that I have a target block on here to activate it. Um, oops. Yeah, there's also a button you can use to activate it. But I want to try and include these kind of features around Science Plaza since uh, Trident is the main weapon that I carry around. And it's just kind of cool. Add some interactivity to the uh, to the farms and stuff. Look at this. You can actually hit the TNT. Doesn't doesn't do anything, but check that out. I mean, is this just not the goofiest cobblestone farm in the world? This thing is straight up goofy goober mode. SpongeBob, let me ask you something. Does this look dangerous? Oh yeah, baby. This is the best farm. Science has proven that this is the best farm. That is the only correct opinion. All right, let's AFK at this little stinker for a couple hours and see how much stones we get. Okay, moment of truth. It's been two or three hours. Oh, nice. All right, the bridge is still intact, which is a, uh, which is a great sign. Let's turn the thing off, so I don't have to keep hearing explosions. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. So, let me check over here. Yeah, it does look like we lost another glass pane, which is kind of unfortunate. Because I could have just had the farm moved over one block and that wouldn't have happened, but it's okay. If you're wondering why a distinguished science man like me would need this much cobble, uh, it, it's actually mostly for redstone components. However, one of my favorite blocks in the game is actually mossy cobble. Um, and it goes really well with our theme here in the science plaza. 
and we built our boss farm two episodes ago. So just combine those, and now we got Mossy Kong, which is a great sustainability option because terraforming can be a bit of a chore. Okay, so let me showcase my concept for terraforming around the science plaza in the form of a time lapse. And so I felt the need to discuss the terraforming project a little bit because admittedly it looks a little rough around the edges. This is by design, as it's supposed to be ruins, but it's also supposed to kind of be alien ruins. The structures themselves are meant to be very geometric and kind of awkward, but also a little bit physics divine and unnatural. My main inspiration for this was a location called the Black Garden in Destiny. So hopefully you can see some of those strange shapes I'm talking about, as well as the prolific moss and plant growth, which is really fascinating to me. In case you don't know, the Science Plaza itself is supposed to be an old laboratory or research facility that's been abandoned to time. So I think this does a decent job at telling the story of why the research facility may have been here in the first place. I'm definitely trying to imply that these are alien ruins or alien tech. So I'll shut up and let the time lapse play out. Please enjoy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Last episode I introduced the arena project and I went ahead and installed the flying machine to where the future arena will be constructed. So I'm not going to have time to work on this today, but I wanted to get this in place because I think it's a good step in the right direction. Hopefully I'll get some time to work on that next episode, but you'll notice that this is floating, which means I'll probably have to build a mountain. Anyways. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode, I had a ton of fun putting this together, and I think we've made massive progress in the world. So if you really want to help me out and you got time to kill, YouTube really likes it when you immediately watch another one of my videos. So I'll make it easy for you and put a playlist on the end screen. Thanks for being here today, and we'll see you in the next episode.